you defended Narayan Maharaj calling himself Bhakti Vedanta because all of Keshav Maharaja's sannyas disciples received this title. You used the example of Muni Maharaj, who took sannyas at the same time as Srila Prabhupada and was also given the title Bhakti Vedanta. It seems that you were implying that Srila Prabhupada also received this title at the time of taking sannyas from Keshav Maharaj. The fact is that Srila Prabhupada received the title not at the time of his sannyas, but during his years as a householder. The Lilamrita lists the year as 1939. This is a little over two years after the departure of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Not only did the Bhakti Vedanta title have nothing to do with Srila Prabhupada's taking sannyas, but it was something much different. It was awarded by a group of intimate God brothers with regard to the special quali qualities and abilities of Srila Prabhupada exhibited. From the following two quotations about this title giving, the, the conclusions which can be drawn are as follows, that this title was meant only for Srila Prabhupada, that it had never before been given to a Vaishnava, what to speak of anybody else in the Gaudiya Mutt, and that it was a very great honor bestowed by his peers who recognized that Srila Prabhupada was more qualified and advanced. Consequently, others may adopt this title and may have many reasons for doing so, but as far as I am concerned, there is only one Bhaktivedanta, and he is that special Bhaktivedanta, and his being thus titled is unique and incomparable. So this is an important point, which most devotees don't know, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> in fact, I went on to write a letter to the Prabhupada Nugas, they like to call themselves Prabhupada Nugas, and my godbrother Udvarga, who is mentioned in the Prabhupada's Mumunya, he became, uh, what he wrote me after a long time, probably a year or two now ago, and he wanted to basically invite me to come somewhere and initiate somebody or something. So anyway, but before responding to his letter, I said, the first thing I have to address is, you are calling yourself the Prabhupada Nugas, a word which no karmi can pronounce, and which is a manufactured word or designations. Prabhupada himself, being designated as Bhaktivedanta, he referred in the first canto to the story of Narada with the sages. He referred to them as the Bhakti Vedantas repeatedly. And then I compiled, actually have it here, I compiled all the time, many times that he used this. Not only did he do that, but he personally wrote to me that he wanted to uh, institute a, t a test for qualifying and those who received the the highest <clears throat> or uh, passing of these different tests, they would be given the title of Bhakti Vedanta. And he said, I want that the Bhakti Vedanta, so you know that you've yes, read yes. it, okay. So now somebody, he, they got better, why are you quibbling over this point, like it's not important. Mm -hmm. But this point is so important that Prabhupada used this title name, or this title, this award that he received from his God brothers, mm -hmm. as his name to the public, like name recognition, BMW or uh, Apple computers, it's trademark. Not a, a trademark name, right? It's not a little thing. Mm -hmm. It's all important thing. So I, I won't go any further, but that may point. Anyway, then Prabhupada, have you read this letter? Have you seen no, this letter? No. Okay. Then the quotation is from Prabhupada. But I retired from my family life. I was sitting alone in Vrindavan writing books. So this, my godbrother, he insisted me, Bhakti Vedanta Prabhu, this title was given in my family life. It was offered to me by...
It was offered to me by the Vaishnav society, so he insisted me. Not he insisted me, practically my spiritual master insisted me through him that you accept, because without accepting the renounced order of life, nobody can become a preacher. So, he, Bhakti Siddhanta, wanted me to become a preacher. So, he, Bhakti Siddhanta, forced me through his god brother. You accept. So, unwillingly I accepted, and then I remembered that he wanted me to go to the western country. So I am feeling now very much obliged to my god-brother. I was there when Prabhupada gave this talk. It was in Seattle, I believe. Yeah, it was... Uh, 68. Appearance, something like that. Yeah. Appearance Day. <clears throat> um, I don't even know how I got there because I was still in Montreal. <laughs> so maybe I had to come to L.A. for something, I don't know. So I am feeling very much now obliged to to my god-brother, this god-brother, that he carried out the wish of my spiritual master and enforced me to accept this sannyas order. In India, the Mayavadi sannyasis are known as Vedanti. Therefore, my society, Vaishnav society, has particularly given me this title, Bhakti Vedanta. Vedanta means bhakti. It is a challenge to the Mayavadi sannyasis. This particular title was given after due consideration that my humble self should be awarded this title. It is a new title amongst the Vaishnav society. So the Mayavadi philosophers, they are sometimes surprised. Oh, how Swamiji is Vedanti at the same time Bhakti. But actually I do not know. Vedanta means Bhakti. Montreal, 1968. Yeah, I guess I But I can't remember who wrote the letter. <laughs> because it's, it's not signed anyway, it's a copy of that letter. And this at your leisure you can sometimes look at, or maybe, do you have a copy machine here? No, but we could go make, we, we could go make copy. I can make a photograph of it. Oh, you can? Yeah. It's amazing here. It's, it's all, it's the first letter that Prabhupada wrote me in December of 68, we December of 68, so far back. Right? He, he, he got on this point. And then here are all the quotations in regard to that story. And this is important. Uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, uh, you, you are not a Prabhupada Nuga, are you? <laughs> but you can introduce this idea if you are, or if you have some communication with him. You mm -hmm. don't even have to mention my name, but just because everything that mentioned my name, they said no. <laughs> But it's an important point. Don't you think it's important? The name. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, why Prabhupada used it? Why did he not use his initiated name, Abhay Chayan? Mm -hmm. Huh? Why did he use this name? And then the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust, the Bhakti Vedanta, everything Bhakti Vedanta. Yeah. It's very important. Uh, you know, in fact, in <clears throat> Western marketing, merchandising. Name recognition is the number one important thing. Mm -hmm. Companies spend thousands of dollars to get someone to find them the, uh, the right name. The name. The name. And, and, and in his best-selling book, Dale Carnegie, he makes an issue. The name of a person is the most important thing to him. And if you meet someone and then you meet him again and you don't remember the name, you have just, you know, made a big mistake. You can't say, you know, I don't know, what, what, what's your name again? He makes the point, Dale Carney, this book sells today still, I think it was written in the 30s, right? How to win friends and influence people. <clears throat> I think some devotees, they said that Prabhupada would always remember everyone's name. Yeah, and, and Prabhupada pointed out, and I read also, whether it was Hitler or Napoleon, any great leading person they either have a fabulous memory or they make it a point. In fact, I don't have a good memory, so when I read this book, I got into the habit, when I meet someone and I know I'm not going to remember, I said, that's a, that's a very unusual name, that's really nice name, how do you spell it? And then I would, and people, they don't object, they actually like it, oh, you're going to write down my name. <laughs> so, Just like Krishna, Krishna likes his name to be glorified, right. so we're the reflections of Krishna. 
Like now, now, if we just think of Prabhupada again, right? He prints, he publishes Krishna book, right? I can make copies of this. You want me to? Yeah, please. Okay. And and uh, he, here, copy this too for him. This is from Bhaktivinoda. When Prabhupada published this book, first of all, no book had ever been published on Krishna in this size, right? And not only that, he doesn't spell the word Krishna, K-R-I-S-H-N. He spells it K-R-S-N-A with these three dots. Right now, an ordinary person would think, no, people won't get that. They would be confused. No, Prabhupada, he understood this. And he didn't have to explain it, but I understood that he understood right when I saw it. <laughs> Krishna book. <laughs> when, when we made that art book, Krishna art, you've seen it? Yeah. So uh, that was my one of my last not last, but it was one of them. So the person helping me put it together, she said, "How? how uh, what, what are you going to call the book?" I said, "Krishna Art with the three dots." She said, "But nobody will buy that book." I said, "They will. They will pay hundreds of dollars for this book, even if they're absolute karmis. They will buy it." And, and, and that turned out to be true. It's unique. Yeah, it's unique. I mean, we we don't have to invent anything. We just have to follow Papa. He he understood. You know, a lot of devotees thought that well, you know, he's an old man. He doesn't know how things are done in America. That's not true. Prabhupada knew exactly. <laughs> of course. And if there was something he, he didn't know, he would ask. He would say, well, "What do you think?" He would often oftentimes he asked me, "Answer to what do you think?" And I would always say, "You really want me to say what I think?" He would say, "Yes." To, then I could. Then I felt free. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna book, yeah. Anyway, here's another. This is I mentioned to you also. I just read you. This is a small conversation, very short. Prapa, the Tamal, and uh, Hari Suri. <clears throat> They're talking about the two pujaris in Mayapur. Their name is Jananivas and his brother, uh, his name, I can't remember now, but they're twins. And they're very outstanding pujaris, and you might have heard yeah. about them anyway. So, Tamal said, they look like they're out of Chaitanya Charitamrita. They, they appear as two persons right out of that book. Prabhupada, yes, very good boys. Tamal, Vaikuntha men, Prabhupada, oh yes, they do not know except the duty, very good boys, Tamal says, perfect team of brothers. Then Prabhupada says, this is the important part, oh yes, therefore Krishna has brought them here in Mayapur. Previously, they were advanced. All of you, you are simply born because this mission was to be started. Just like in Yadu Vamsa, Krishna ordered all the devotee demigods to go, take birth there, and help me. Similarly, you are, you are also, you were born in Europe and America to help this movement. Otherwise, you were devotees in your past life. I have explained that in my recent writing. The purport, purport was Mom A.T. One goes to Krishna where his pastimes are going on, and then they are transferred to the original. So, all the devotees picked up, and they were placed together where Krishna is having his pastimes in either, in either of these innumerable universes. He's going on, just moving, sun is moving little, little, so Krishna's pastimes, they're always going on, this universe, that universe, in some universe. He's all in all universes present, that is called Nitya-lila. So, those who are advanced, perfected devotees, first of all, they are sent there and then, uh, then further trained up. Mom A.T., just like after passing the administration examination, he's made, he, one is made assistant to some magistrate, then gradually he's promoted higher, higher. Then Hari Suri says, when we were in New York last summer, you said that the spiritual master also has associates who appear along with him to help him in his mission. 
Prabhupada, yes, Krishna wants his assistance. The spiritual master also requires assistance. Everything is going on under Krishna's direction. Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Satcharacharam. So that is the. So those devotees, they didn't just like, oh, we bumped into Prabhupada, it was accidental, it was a one time. No, it's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. And that ongoing is expanded through those devotees to other devotees, just like you became devotee. I don't know how you became devotee, but some, somewhere there was some connection to Prabhupada. You see? This, you know, in, 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 in computer technology, they, they have this expression, digital footprint. Wherever you go in that system, there is a record. <laughs> right? So similarly, every living being, the, the record is there. So it is either strictly karmic, or it is mixed, or it is pure. So I don't say, and, and we don't say that, oh, all these devotees are pure devotees. No, they're devotees, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. So each time they appear, in the entourage or in the mission of Prabhupada, they make more perfect with Prabhupada, not only with Prabhupada, but with one another. Mm -hmm. And they expand with some who come later and so forth, like that. Anyway. Okay, I gave it, she's going to make the copy. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Um, I have a, a question I wanted to ask you Yeah. about uh, High Griva. Oh yeah, I agree with him. I agree with him. Um, he was... Can I wear this hat or is that too ostentatious? I ain't gonna do whatever you like. I know I can do whatever I like, but I need your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, why not? Okay. I don't mind. Anyway, are you? Are we on film? Yeah. Oh, we are? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I agree with him. So, um, um, there's a couple of letters I found. Um, <coughs> one of them is about Prabhupada is explaining. These are both addressed to you. Uh, the letters. These letters, yeah. So that's why you know I think it'd be nice if you, maybe you could uh, tell something about it. Um, this is the first one. This is where Ahai Griva had kind of like a, a fall down. Yeah, just one second. Yeah. I need to use the. Okay. Right. Restroom. Quickly. Sure.